Hi everyone. Hi. So it's early morning, Friday morning. It is. Bath, and uh, we we didn't get to film a, a third video last night, so we're filming one very early this morning from here. We start. are. So yes, yeah, so we look a bit fresh faced early morning, but you know we've done that kind of early morning stuff in videos, we have. In videos before, so we you have. know it's gonna be five minutes. But anyway, we want <coughs> to talk about. <coughs> A book, mm-hmm. a drama. I haven't read the book, Laura has, but it's my uh, next book on my list. And um, yeah, we just really want to talk about it. And that is The Woman in White. I think you can see that just about. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because the window, I'm trying to prevent the reflection. Um, so this was shown on BBC One, what, about last month? Yeah, last month. I was going to say a a month or so, maybe a month and a half ago, when it first started airing. And it was five episodes, so it was five hours long, but they showed it over three weeks because it was a. An initial Saturday transmission, and a second week, a Sunday, sorry, and then yeah. initi- and then the following week they did Sunday Monday, and the following week they did Sunday Monday again. Mm-hmm. So they did five episodes in three weeks. Yeah, um, and I am so happy about that because I was, I was like, I really need the this episode. I really need it. But what happened was that I I watched it when it aired, and I really liked it, and yeah. I told Laura about it. And she said, oh, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then kind of like two days later, I was sat at work mm-hmm. and you started messaging me. I go, I'm watching The Woman in White. This is really good. And, oh, I, my God, this is a bit. And I got, I just got text after text after text. <laughs> I loved it because oh, wow. it didn't fall into the trap of artifice yeah. that some period dramas do. It yeah. looked very natural. It looked... Uh, that it was concerned with building character, building relationships before obviously setting it off yeah. where it goes. Yeah. But now I've read the book, yeah. I can kind of see the flaws in the drama. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Obviously, there's going to be spoilers in this video for the drama and, and, and the, the book. book. Yeah. And I know the musical as well, the Andrew Lloyd Webber mm-hmm. musical. Um, as you know, I haven't read the book. It's actually next on my to read less so I can't taking, wait for you to read I'm it. taking it on holiday next week when I go to Stratford so yeah, yeah we'll see uh, see how we'll go with it yeah um, but yeah so this is going to be full of spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled thank you for tuning into this point yeah and we're going into spoiler land from now on all I, yeah all I'll say if you don't want to be spoiled is five star book five star drama although because like you said you can see the floor. but to me because I don't know the book yeah this is this is probably a, a four star drama from the book. Right. Okay. It's not. It's not a. Yeah. I, it, the book is the book. The thing is the thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a perfectly sound adaptation. Of yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. So let's go into spoiler land and let's explain what's about. Laura, as you've read the book and seen the drama, why don't you tell us okay. what the story is about? The story is about a man called Walter Hartwright, who that name is just perfection for him because he's everything. Um, and he's full of heart. He is, <laughs> he is, and his heart is right and, and pure. He is, he's just the most wonderfully good man. Mm-hmm. He, he's genuinely just a, a good, good man. Anyway, he... Um, rescues his friend Pesca from drowning and Pesca is Italian yeah and to repay that Pesca in a grand gesture gets him a job at this place called Limeridge House teach to teach he is an art teacher to teach two women to um these two women how to draw so he goes to Limeridge House and on his way, he is walking back from his mother's house to London. And on the road to London, he's startled by a woman dressed all in white. Yeah. A woman he can tell is distressed, yeah. that he can tell is perhaps not quite in her right mind. And he sort of starts to talk to her to kind of, kind of calm her down and mentions that he's going to work in a place called Limeridge House. Yeah. 
and she um, knows Limeridge House, she knows the family that live there, but she doesn't say why she knows them. Yeah, and she keeps asking if he's a baronet. She, she, she does, she keeps asking, are you a baronet? Do you know anybody in that that branch of the aristocracy? And he says no, and she says, so I can trust you then. And they walk part of the way to London, and then he sees a carriage and puts her in it so that she'll be safe. Mm -hmm. And she goes off. And then another carriage comes along and they say, have you seen a woman in white? Yeah. She's escaped from our asylum. And he doesn't say, oh, yes, I put her in that carriage. Yeah, he, he, he chooses to protect yeah. her. Yeah. He so he goes safe. to Limeridge House and he tries to find out, figure out the connection between yeah. this woman and Limeridge House. Yeah. And it sends it down this incredible path. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I love the fact that when he meets the sisters, um, so it's Marion and Laura. Who Laura. share the same mother. Who, but different, different fathers. fathers, so they've got. That's why they've both got different names. Yeah. yeah. So there's but, Laura Fairley and Marion yeah. Halcombe, and Marion Halcombe is literally one of my favourite yeah. literary heroines I have ever read. Yeah. Before, Girl Crush. Yeah. Before, before you oh. go on about Marion, I'm just going to say that the thing that causes him to to really look into it is that when he meets Laura, yes, Laura looks exactly like the woman in white and she's all dressed in white when she he is her. she is and he's really taken aback by this and so he and and marion really um well at least in the drama um because i don't know the book go on this kind of mission to find out who the woman in white was and what the well, connection was um the and thing, but then various things happen and you know the thing is about mm. these three people is that they make a throuple Oh, yeah. Not a couple, That's a throuple, because there's three of them. Yeah. Now, Laura and Walter, because we're in spoiler ter territory, yeah. Laura and Walter get married in the end. Yeah. But Marion lives with them mm -hmm. and helps raise their children. Yeah. But it's not a case of, oh, she's the poor, sad spinster. She is as much a person of significance in that relationship yeah than laura is yeah she and walter are soulmates yeah and you laura can, and see, marion are soulmates you can see how marion and walter just get on as soon they as are they, they are like magnets yeah. to each other but in a very platonic brother sister non-sexual yeah. way yeah. whereas with laura he falls totally yeah. head over heels in love with Laura. Yeah. And, and see, that's a flaw that I have with the musical. Because yeah. in the musical, they made it that Marion's got a big crush on Walter. No, And no, she's no. quite devastated when... Um, when he see, that annoys Laura. me because... Hey, you don't need to have a love triangle in this situation. You really don't. Marion's Marion is the most free person in it. In a lot of ways. Marion is... Well, Walter says it himself. She's ugly. Mm. She's not desired by men. She's yeah. poor. She's, but she has a first-rate mind. Yeah. She is so intelligent. She's so charismatic. She is loyal to Walter and to Laura. Mm -hmm. And as the story goes on... Laura and Marion form a kind of this. Th there's this, this bond between them. Marion's focus is to keep Laura safe. Yeah, keep Laura safe. Never about herself. No, it's all about Laura. And there has there has been um, sort of interpretations of of Marion as having a kind of pseudo attraction to Laura but I don't think that's what it what it is I think it's because they've shared a mother they've both lost their mother they live with Laura's uncle who is an absolute oh. arsehole he's an idiot he, he's, but he's a hypochondriac and that's he's, really, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's horrible he's, yeah, he's a horrible really man but 
their bond as a three mm-hmm. is is Step-ass. absolutely it yeah. does not go anywhere which is why the ending of that really annoyed me right when she goes traveling right that is not what marion is about marion is as fundamental to them as each other is right they would not have in I fact think, he I think even they... says at the very end of the novel he even says it was marion that brought us together yeah. and marion who is our angel well, I think maybe they they gave her in the drama. They gave her the travel thing because, uh, it because she talks about seeing far off places and stuff. And uh, that, again, I don't know if that's in the book, but I wonder if it was just a case a, a, a way a visual way of showing her freedom. That, maybe or maybe but... because because of the whole and the whole thing of what happens with Laura and and, and Anan that she feels that that she has to she cannot rest she cannot have a peace until she's done and this is a way of visually representing her peace i don't know it was, to, it, was the, it was up to the honestly, writer you know who, who i thought i thought it was because um a modern audience wouldn't understand why a couple would want the sister living with them you say that that's actually very interesting because if you think about war and peace mm-hmm. song you know, as Sonia she stays, she stays she? and yep. she raises the along with her ex fiance and his new wife and their kids. She lives with them. Yep. She helps raise those kids. And he, a modern audience would be like, "What?" So when you had the ending of the War and Peace drama, they never they showed Sonia there, but, but they wasn't. never referred to why she you yeah. know that what she did. Yeah. So maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. A modern audience not being but able to understand in in um, the novel. They are fused together by yeah. the end of it. There, there would be no Walter and Laura without Marion. Yeah, it's not possible. It, it isn't possible. Yeah. And there's yeah in the in the musical also, they have this thing that they kind of imply that Walter might like Marion as well. Just just because just because it's a one off thing that um in, later on when they're trying to track yeah. down. Laura, mm-hmm. I'll, we'll explain why in a minute. Um, she has to um, get information out of a certain bad gentleman who we'll mention in a minute. And so she dresses up for him. She wears this kind of, well, it's obviously it's a period dress, but kind of a bit off the shoulder. And she's like, oh God, this is so, oh, trying to get used to it. And Walter's kind of just stood there, kind of with his mouth open. She said, what are you looking at? And she's like, I've, I've never seen you wear a dress like that before. And she's like, and he said, you, you look, you look nice. I'm like, oh, thanks. She, she, it's kind of, see, in it's the a bit like Walter. No, 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 no. At this point. No, 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 no! You don't do that. In this book, <laughs> when Laura is recovering, yeah, from her, what happens? Well, what explain happens that. In a minute. She says to Walter, "You're going to end up liking Marion more than me," mm. and he says, "No, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, Marion is his sister. Yeah, not his lover. Yeah, not his wife." No. And for them to do that to Marion, I personally find offensive mm. because she would it's, never yeah. lower herself to do that. Yeah, she's got a very but they, high opinion but of they herself. Do, they do some very but for a good reason. They do some very weird things in the musical as well, where certain events are changed. The way that certain characters leave the story is changed um the one thing that really perplexed me listening to the musical and i don't know if this is in the book Mm -hmm. and they changed it for the drama or if they have changed for the musical that with um the explanation of what happened to laura again we'll get onto that in a second um they say that she she was sleepwalking and she sleepwalked out of her bedroom window and it's like really no yeah, exactly. But then no. it's it's again the limitations of the the dra- of the theatre and what they could. Yeah, so you have that factor as well. But, but it's a bit like I'm sorry, you're giving me that. But that <laughs> the way they portray Laura's escape in that is wrong as well. Right. Okay. That's all wrong. Walter doesn't 
come back. Okay. Right. Well, what what we'll do, we'll talk about what the events that happened. Yeah. I think it's best to do it in that yeah. order. So he's arrived at Limeridge House. He arrives at Limeridge. He's, he's falling falls in love with Laura, Laura. And she's falling for him. Yeah. And then Marion kind of goes, Halt, stop right there. You need to stop. Yes. Yeah. Because Laura's um, going to be married. Yeah. There's an agreement between our uncle and a man called Percival Glyde. So Percival Glide. Percival Glide. Yeah. <laughs> He's an arsehole. He's a seriously nasty human being. Yeah. But he's nasty in the sense that he is psychologically violent, not yes. physically violent. Which yeah, um, and I I I agree that there was an article that came out the day after the first episode aired Mm. and it was from the telegraph and it was their review and they said this is a drama for the me too generation i completely agree with that and it was yeah everything that this this person said about this drama was totally right and about it's about time that we have stuff like this with you know psychological effect and it shows that it wasn't something that's only now yeah this has been going on for hundreds of years yeah and um to get a classic piece of literature that mm-hmm. says this that people don't know about yeah and have it play out and it's how well i mean well it's constructed the I story started, the twists and the turns oh, it's and the, so it's, good yeah. i can't even tell you but because what it is the way that it's put together and it's i've never read a victorian novel that that is constructed this way right this book is Walter's amalgamation of proof that Laura is Laura yeah. and not Anne Catherick, yeah. who is the woman in white. Yeah. There is a reason why Anne and Laura look very, very similar to each other. Yeah. Um, so you start off with Walter, then you have Mr. Gilmore, who's the family solicitor, and then you have a massive block in the middle that's marion's diary right and there's there are bits of it that made me laugh out loud it was like percival comes to the house after walter is left and she's trying really hard to like him mm-hmm. and to say oh yes his manners were lovely and you know he's he's a very delicate piano player and complimented laura and then the next passage she goes i hate him i fucking hate this man <laughs> he's an arsehole oh, oh not quite that way but you yeah, know what but i mean to, she as hates strong him. as she possibly could have a woman of this society she's rank. like i detest this man yeah and that sticks um but no, what impressed me about it was the way that Wilkie Collins, who was a contemporary friend and protege of Charles Dickens, mm-hmm. how he constructs this incredible tribute to these women who do so much to win their own freedom, yeah. who They're do not, not betray each other, yeah. who are strong together they will will go to the end of the earth they'll go to the end of the earth for each other yeah and i loved it so much i and about (sighs) sicily bond and that because you don't really get that in yeah yeah. he 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 has such (coughs) a respect for women and that the the women are the key players they are walter He's in it, and then when he, when you know, Percival comes along, it's a case of he has to go. He drops out the story. He doesn't pop up until about two thirds of the way through yeah, again, does he? It's true. So, and he's one of the. Yeah, you know, it's so funny when he comes yeah. back. He goes. So I went to Honduras. I nearly died about three times. I was shipwrecked. <laughs> um, might have caught a disease or two, but that's boring. So we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about this. Yeah. And one of my favourite passages in the book um, is Laura is rescued entirely by Marion. Right. Marion, it's all Marion's own um, genius that gets her out. Right. Marion arranges all of that. Then Walter comes back and he sees what has happened to Laura and how she's become a shadow of herself 
because of her experiences. And he says, and I sent you a photo of the page, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. He says, I don't care if she doesn't want to marry me or love me. It's not about me. Yeah. It's about getting her well. Yeah. And Marion and Walter construct a kind of... He uses art therapy to help he does, her. does, yeah. I've he, never even heard of yeah. like a Victorian novelist using art to therapise someone well, before. Well, novels, regardless in Victorian time, thinking of giving someone therapy after the stuff that their characters he go does, through. He does, he uses art um, therapy he to help her. In the drama um, as well, I don't know if it's in the book, he gives her a music box and it takes that, her, um, it takes her ages to open it and then She's no. she's in her, she's in her room and they're they're in the other room reading and writing you know and figuring out stuff and they just hear this music box and they just look at Marion and Walter just look at each other and smile because it's it's the it's the it's the first sign that she's starting to come round yeah. as it were I mean as I said that's very good for a drama that kind of so thus I didn't know if it I mean was Nora doesn't ever sit um, on the edge of a roof and contemplate suicide she well, never does no, that but again it's but. A drama, a visual, you know, some stuff. But kind of they get um, to a point where they realise Laura needs employment. Yeah. So what they do, it's so sweet. It's it's wonderful. Walter tells Laura, I've got a buyer for your work hmm. and he'll pay you a shilling a picture or something yeah. like that. Or 10 shillings a picture. Yeah. And so she gives them to Walter mm. and he buys them off her Aww. and disposes of them or keeps them. Yeah. So she thinks that she's making them money, but she isn't. Right. But it doesn't matter because for them, keep getting her back to herself yeah. is important. Yeah. And they... But you know what? I mean, I'm making it sound as if Laura is some kind of needy naive no but once you understand what she's what she's been she's through, been through so yeah. yeah but um so yeah we're kind of but we're drifting has, to the end and coming back to the we're going like that laura it? has um, a kernel of steel oh yeah. in her soul yeah and she's i mean there's a moment in it where she refuses to sign a document yeah well, should we should we explain? Yeah, because we need yeah, to because we keep on it's jumping a, forward and it's we're quite a complicated so, yeah, plot. So so right, so Percival Glide has turned up, and he brings an Italian friend with him. Mm-hmm. Fosco. Yeah, Fosco, um, who does not look like this very handsome. Handsome man. I there. love the fact that they use an Italian actor. Yes. Not an English yes. actor trying to sound Italian. No, he's a Because Italian that's a disaster. Man. He's he's actually and an he Italian seems, person. I, love, I really like it, even though he doesn't, obviously, because he's doing it to, to get attention. I kind of like that him singing in Italian as well. Um, yeah, because in the book, it right. He is morbidly at least. He's in the book. hugely fat yeah. in the book. But he's also incredibly charismatic yeah. he's so she, luxuriant she knows and how to get people to to, to do what he wants and do what he wants yeah. and weirdly he um it's in the musical so i gather and, and it's in the radio play that he has uh, mice white mice he has yeah. white mice who he carries which is sim- symbolic of everybody else yes that he can it. make them do what he wants them to yeah. do in the yeah. in in this drama i really found it interesting his wife is the wife in yes the book? she is Very right possible, the reason yeah. why i ask is because it has been a while but i was thinking back of the toby stevens mm. radio play and i couldn't mm-hmm. remember if the wife was in it she is she, but not, not very, very much, much no. uh, yeah yeah so um yeah his wife's a, an interesting loss as well <laughs> and the, the two of them will do absolutely anything including murder to get what they want his wife is a very odd mixture of an accomplice and a victim. Yes. He keeps her on a very short leash. Yeah. Um, and the wife is actually Laura's Laura's aunt. Mm. Because she is Laura's uncle's sister. Yeah. Miss, her name was Miss Fairley. And yeah. now she's Madame Fosco. Fosco. And... But it, it's it's like with like a lot of people in 
abusive situations, they have a bond between them. Mm. And I don't think Madame Fosco knows who she is without Fosco now. Yeah, that's He's got in to... like the final scene <clears throat> of, of the drama when he kind of sends her away and says, forgive me, and she's completely like, what? And then the carriage just takes her away. Mm-hmm. Um, she, Yeah, I have, I feel like he, he would just kind of fall apart. Mm-hmm. She but wouldn't have the... Fosco is such a presence in the book. Yeah. And I love how... <clears throat> It's kind he, of like he's, he's always lingering. He's yeah, he's, always there. He's always yeah, watching. He he falls kind of in love with Marion. Yeah, he becomes obsessed with Marion. He is. Marion hates him. Yeah, but absolutely despises him. He. It's almost like. Do you remember in Rome when Julius Caesar gets incredibly angry because they've killed the king of the Britons? Or they've killed a really, a a very prominent warrior, Mm. and they they hang him. Yeah, and he's furious. Yeah, because he was a warrior who deserves a warrior's death. Yeah, and they are. What 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 I'm trying to say is basically their adversaries, Mm. and he absolutely respects the fact that she is 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 his equal that she could topple him yeah and he knows it right and he, he that kind of excites him right that he's opposite somebody of such high caliber that she could and she does mm. and i i really enjoyed that aspect of the novel that kind of complete um, self delusion of Fosco's, but his absolute respect for Marion's character, Marion's yeah, mind. Yeah, I loved that about it. Yeah, so it's for him that in the musical, Marion dresses up and she kind of seduces to get and standing out of him where Laura is. That's how. She that's how. Be, uh, that's how they figure out how where Laura is in in the musical in, that's the musical yeah um oh. so yeah so the marriage has to take place walter leaves yeah he goes, goes to honduras goes to honduras even though marion loves him and he loves marion no, laura, laura, uh, laura laura sorry laura. i'm getting i'm getting the sister's middle notes because i glanced down and marion's looking straight at me um, who is played by the divine yeah the divine jesse buckley, buckley. Her, oh i, I love I love the fact that she started off, she was on the show I'll Do Anything with Andrew Lloyd Webber trying to find the next Nancy for Oliver and she came second. She went to drama school and now she's done such amazing stuff including this, The Last Post, War and Peace. Mm -hmm. She's the main character in an independent movie at the moment as well. I've seen Trader 4 but I can't remember what on earth it's called. She's she's popped up here, there and everywhere. She's a great actress. She's She's amazing. And the roles that she chooses chooses to play yeah she plays such interesting women yeah and can i just say ben hardy you have come very far since these senders you pretty boy (laughs) see it's weird because i i started re-watching these senders because you got me back kind of into it yeah and the week that i well no the week that i started watching senders was the week that he left yeah so I knew him vaguely. And when I was watching this drama, I'm like, I know that face. Why do I know that face? And then yeah. I realised who it was. It's, yeah. Hey, it's Peter Neal. <laughs> but um, no, he was he was fantastic in it in yeah. it too. Okay, so Laura Laura's married Percival Glyde. He ha- she has, yeah. And straight off, Marion and and Laura are separated because Marion's been told she's not allowed to come on the honeymoon. She yeah. can't be a companion. Yeah. So she has to go like a couple of months without Laura. Yeah. And it's very tough. It's incredibly hard for her, yeah. And when she comes back, there's something a bit off with Laura. Yeah. She's very like Marion says to her, So how was it? You know, tell me about Italy. So it was nice. Yeah. Florence, I think, was my favourite. She's very cold. And that's She's it. very she she can't express herself. Yeah, she's overjoyed when she sees Marion. She hurt, she holds she her is, to, yeah. to to you know she clings. But like, she doesn't clings to her. She doesn't want to tell her the truth no. about what her marriage what, is like. What it is. Yeah. And to be honest, you never really 
Um, she never really goes into explicit detail. No, but Collins most, is such a great most, writer that you don't yeah. you get that he's yeah. been awful to her. The the most you get is that at one point Marion sees bruising on her wrist on on Laura's wrist and she talks about how he'd done it before and how he's pinned her to the bed and she doesn't go any further from that and Marion gets it. Just mm. she doesn't need to be told. She doesn't even that. say that in the book well yeah that's the drama yeah but, yeah, yeah. but yeah. she doesn't need to be told anymore mm-hmm. she's not going to put her sister through saying that yeah because she she gets it yeah so yeah um and and pops up before walter leaves and pops up again at um, the graveyard yeah crying over um mrs fairy Fairly's grave, so over Laura's and Marion's mother, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, they kind of have a bit of back and forth, and then Anne just kind of disappears. Mm-hmm. She, um, yeah, yeah, she does, and yeah, so Marion overhears because she goes out in a storm and stays on a balcony like all night. Yeah, overhears a conversation in which the guys want Laura's money. Yeah. And the only way they can think of to get it is if they murder her. Yeah. But then this is this is the bit where the rock kinda get yeah. pulled out from under your feet and how the manipulation Glide men. mentions to Fosco yeah. how much Anne Catherick looks like right. Laura. Yeah. And Fosco's mind starts whirring it's so and uh, it's so interesting fosco how, how how could how could you instantly come up with that that plan because he's just, diabolical uh, yeah exactly he's he's just like what what plan well what planet are you on just like to, to have the ability to do that yeah but how smart he is he's very smart because he thought of pretty much everything yeah. apart from one element yeah <laughs> one teeny tiny element which he really should have thought of you think it'd be glaringly obvious but you know yeah um so uh, marion has been um well she you in the drama he is locked in a room and you're told that she got sent away mm-hmm. But she didn't get sent away. No. She's actually locked in another part of the house. Yeah. And there are massive padlocks on her windows, on the door. She literally, she cannot Because leave. she gets ill. Because she's, she, she gets becomes very ill, Ill. From the storm. Yeah. Um, See, the way Collins writes that is incredible. Because Laura, um, Marion, see, see, this is... It's, it's, really, it's really easy to get into change because yeah. of how close they are, the connection with these two women. Marion writes the the in her diary mm. what happened and then she starts feeling ill mm. and her writing becomes quite um disconnected and disjointed yeah and um what's really great about it is that it's like dot 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 yeah and then it says underneath in like parentheses it says uh the narrative became illegible yeah and then you have a paragraph and it says uh the events contained herein are perfectly true Mm. and about how incredible the mind is that could recall such events Mm -hmm. fosco oh fosco has been reading marion's diary yeah yeah, it's incredible. So, it's just so yeah, good. Laura gets separated from Marion. Um, she's told that Marion's gone to London yeah. to get better. Yeah, and she goes. And when she arrives, Fosco is waiting for her mm-hmm. with two men. Yeah, who have come to talk to her, and she thinks they've come to talk to her about Marion when they've come to talk to her about. Her. And the next thing you know, Marion is guess has received a letter from Fosco to say that 
that Laura's dead. Mm -hmm. She suddenly became ill mm -hmm. and died. And Marion is inconsolable. Mm -hmm. She's she feels her life has been torn from her. Mm -hmm. she, you know, a part of her soul is gone. Mm -hmm. And she can't understand what's happening. And she realises there's something not right here. Mm -hmm. I don't... Uh, there's something strange. She appeals to the solicitor. To look well, she it. gets... She manages to get out because the... Uh, 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 the close family friend, um, mm -hmm. isn't it? I think yes, it is, isn't it's it? Yes, yeah. yeah. And no, the 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 female, the 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 servant at Blackwater, like she's the one who gets who finds her in the drama. She finds her on the floor, and she gets her out of the house. Because Blackwater Lake is is park, 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 park. sorry, is um, Percival Glide's home. That's where. You no, know, in the book, her nurse, Mrs. Rubell, mm. is a spy for Fosco. Right. Um, and Laura is told, um, that Marion is told that Laura is dead. Mm -hmm. So Marion leaves and goes to London. Yeah. Because she has no reason to live there anymore. Yeah. They kind of fudge that in that. Okay. Um, and she goes to Mr. Gilmore, yeah. the solicitor, who's, at, no, it's not Mr. Gilmore, it's Mr. Curl, yeah. the new solicitor. And he looks into it and he can't see anything wrong. Yeah. Because he interviews the doctor, he interviews the servants, yeah. and everyone's all, yeah, she just kind of... She had a bad heart. She had a heart, heart problem, she had a bad, she had and a she's heart dead. Condition. And Laura is 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 away, is gone from yeah. her, and she doesn't know how to cope with that. So... She tracks down Walter. She tracks down... No, she doesn't track down Walter. She tracks down Anne Catherick. She finds... Anne Catherick in the asylum realizes it's Laura and gets her the fuck out of yeah. there on her own initiative. In the drama, she finds Walter and the two of them go to the solicitor together, and he's he's he is involved with finding um, Laura, who's been placed in the asylum under the name Anne Catherick, and then that way. So that way, because the asylum knew about Anne, they know they're going to and the goes Anne escapes. <laughs> They're going to make sure she can't escape. Mm -hmm. She is there for good. There's nobody around who will help, her, who would get her out, as mm -hmm. it were. And that means they can declare Laura dead by mm -hmm. burying Anne as Laura and get her money. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole thing. But they didn't count on Marion. No. Say, not believing being a badass story. bitch because Marion helped but them. I is... love I love Marion. She's so struck but the, but to give you an idea of like the presence of Fosco and how he is everywhere and everything and thus you think he would he would think about this. But yeah. you could say it's because of his falling for Marion, he couldn't see the the flaw in his plan because he was too he was too enamoured with that plan. Mm -hmm. There's a fantastic sequence where um Marion is trying to write a letter to Laura mm -hmm. and she writes the letter and she goes downstairs to put it in the, the post bag yeah. and there's a point Percival Guy comes out of the room and she ducks behind a bit of furniture so she cannot possibly see. She takes the lightest possible step so she doesn't make a creep so she can put it in, she can get the letter and get it out. Mm -hmm. um, and right after she puts it in the bag Madame Fosco turns up and they kind of walk in a circle around a bit of the house, mm -hmm. talking about becoming friends and stuff. And Marion's a bit like, yeah, you know, we'll see. And uh, Madame Fosco goes, right, I better, I've got to go do some things, see you later. And leaves her at the Penny Boves bag. And mm -hmm. Marion reaches in and finds that her letter's been opened. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so she knows that Fosco is watching her. Yeah. Fosco is everywhere. Yeah, he is. So that's why it's so interesting that the one thing that he never saw possibly happening was her saying, no, you're talking bullshit. Mm -hmm. yeah, he never a, saw it. And Marion is, it, is such an incredible person. Yeah. She really is. Like, yeah. One of, she's just one of my yeah. absolute favourite. I mean, Wilkie Collins had 
an incredibly unconventional life. Yeah. He didn't have a wife. He had two families. Yeah. They both knew about each other, but mm-hmm. he, he didn't believe in the institution of marriage. Yeah. But he had two women who were his lovers, mistresses, who both had children. Um, and he writes these just incredible stories mm. about incredible women. And I can't, I can't even tell you how much I loved The Woman in White. Mm. I read it in three weeks and six days. <laughs> it's a 700-page book. Mm-hmm. It's a big book. But I adored, I just adored the story. I adored the characters. I loved how everything just fit together. There's no loose ends. There's no, you know, everybody who deserves dessert gets dessert. Yeah, we'll talk about the desserts in a minute because the, the dessert for Percival Glide, I think, is fabulous. Yeah. Of all the possible things yeah. you could have chosen to happen, that is. It, it was wonderful. Top-notch. It was so, so good. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. So after um, Marion uh, Marian and, and in the drama, Walter, get Laura out. So it's with the death of Laura in the book, it's because she's got a heart condition and we know kind of it's kind of referred to earlier on that Anne has a, a weak heart, as it mm-hmm. were, from childhood. Um, but in the musical, they say that she was sleepwalking and she sleepwalked out of her bedroom window. I know, it's a bit crazy. It's like, and it's just, it's just a line in a song. So it's like, you could actually just say she had a weak heart as a line in a song, couldn't yeah. you? It's not like you had to visualise and yeah. see her go out the window. It was, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just a bit weird that in the musical. Anyway, um, so after they've rescued, um, rescued Laura, they take her back to Limeridge House and her uncle denies that she is Laura. Mm-hmm. He says, no, that's Anne. That's, mm-hmm. You can't prove that that's Laura. So now they start off on this mission to prove that Laura is Laura. Mm-hmm. And it links back to Percival Glide. Mm-hmm. And why, why is he, the way he is, why is he obsessed with getting this money? What, why is he so secretive about mm-hmm. his past? And uh, one thing leads to another, and Walter, I gather it's Walter in the yep. book as well, yeah, he discovers a wedding certificate, well, a, a log of of a wedding in parish documents, which has been shoved in, mm-hmm. in very small writing, in calligraphy that doesn't match the rest of the mm-hmm. document, Yeah, uh, talking about the marriage of his parents and the guy who's there who's showing him around says in the drama he says well this is a copy let me get the original we can have a look at it and it's not in the original Mm -hmm. so they know that he forced that in there because he was illegitimate Mm -hmm. and he needed proof that he wasn't in order to get to the status that he is and be able to marry laura Mm -hmm. and because by being illegitimate, that means that he wouldn't get the money. He wouldn't. No. He wouldn't get Laura's money because he was illegitimate. Just despite okay. their marriage and everything, mm-hmm. he would not get it. So that's why he's he's he wants the money. He he's, does. He's a greedy he bastard. Money. Let's put it that way. He is. He <laughs> is. Um, but the way the way that that is done is. So Walter goes off to find the original, which is at a different church in the mm-hmm. parish. He finds the original. He realises that, that, no, Glyde has forged this mm-hmm. entry into the marriage register. So he goes back to the or- original church. With its faulty door. With its faulty door. With its lock that doesn't work. I love that. Oh, how my it's, God. It's, it's, so it's a throw-off line at the beginning yeah. of the scene, and it's... He's talking, the guy who's taking him in with his big glowing finger keys, he's chattering and chittering away, and he's, uh, Walter's like, get on with it, let me get in the chat, you know, he, yeah. and you kind of, as as the person, you know, watching this drama and listening to the radio play, you're kind of like, yeah, get on with it, you're not paying attention, mm-hmm. and then when it turns on personal glide, it's absolutely amazing. Wilkie Collins burns him alive. Life. 
literally. <laughs> it's not not just not. We're not talking metaphorically here. He talking, literally burns, burns him alive, and it was amazing. Yeah. It was it was so good. Percival Glides realised he's heard the Walters onto him, mm-hmm. so he goes to destroy the document. And in destroying the document, he accidentally causes a fire. But what he's done is that he got the keys and he let himself in and then locked himself in. Mm-hmm. And it's like knocking over a candle or something in the drama. From what, um, is that, in uh, in uh, the book, the, the room is a storage cupboard as well as a, a vestry for... Yeah the registers and there's a lot of old dry wood yeah in the corner like yeah. a lot of it yeah there's a lot and of if he had a candle so. that would just go <laughs> in seconds and yeah. it does and yeah and um he then runs to the door to get out and, and the lock sticks yeah and walter's on the other side and he says to the guys uh, we've got a key for the other door around the back, and he went. The keys are on the, on lock, the same on the same ring, ring. that he's got, yeah. and the fire's blocking his way, and yeah. there's nothing they can do to get in, no. and they just he burns to death. Do it's funny because in the radio play they portray it as him screaming, but in yeah. in the book he doesn't make a sound. Really? Yeah. He's in the in the drama. He's banging like crazy in the door, and he's like, "Oh, let me let me out, let me out!" And Walter and a couple of guys like get the bench, a really heavy bench, and it takes three or four attempts, but they finally get through. And when they get through, he stood there and he is on fire. His mm-hmm. entire upper body is on fire, and then he falls to the floor, mm-hmm. and that's you know the last that you see of him. Yeah. Uh, apart from when his body gets brought out. Um, uh, the following scene, yeah, and they they just have to stand there and they have to watch this church burn with him yeah. inside. Yeah, but it's I can't help but feel satisfied by it. Mm-hmm. You can't help that it, he's it's... been so awful the whole time. Yeah, and I mean it's not Percival's fault that he's illegitimate, but it is his fault that he he pretended his wife was dead for her money. Yeah. And not only that, you find out later. Philip Fairley, Laura's father, is also Anne Catherick's father. That's why they look so much alike. Anne Catherick, her mother, was Sir Percival's servant. Mm-hmm. He, so that's how he found out that Philip Fairley was Anne's father. father. Yeah. He was blackmailing Fairley yeah. for money. Yeah, and then when Fairly died, Fairly said, "You keep my secret, and you can marry my daughter Laura." Yeah. So Laura has been sold into marriage without even knowing without it. knowing him. Oh, knowing it, knowing at all. it. No. And Marion has. In she's that been. Gone. She's been well, certainly sexually abused yep. at some point. Yeah. She had her identity stolen from her. Yeah, she was she then got... put in an asylum where even the most, the best and most private asylums treating mentally ill people yeah. like animals. There's there's a sequence in the drama where because she keeps saying I'm Laura, I'm not Anne, she gets put in solitary confinement and she's shoved in a corner to stare at the corner in a straitjacket, yeah. all by herself for like twenty odd hours a day. Yeah, and that's what she has to endure for. Yeah. Days, 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 weeks, weeks, possibly months. We, we so don't know the time scale exactly. For Laura to be as traumatized as she is, using the art therapy yeah, and stuff, it's really, understandable. Yeah. When Walter sees her for the first time, he can't believe that this is the same yeah. person. He even says in the book, he says she looks just like Anne. Yeah. Now. Yeah. That and that that wild look in that her eye and haunted, trying to understand why yeah. died about everything. Yeah, she, she's she's so traumatized. So Marion and Walter take it on themselves to bring Laura yeah. back. Yeah, and it, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I can't wait for you to read but it. But then we've also got the ending of another bad man, Count Fosco. Fosco, yeah. Now Fosco has got an interesting past as well. Yeah. What we learn, Fosco is thanks a to thanks to Walter's 
lovely Italian friend, Pesca, Pesca, who reveals that the he was part of a well, Pesca is part was part of a, a secret society, as was Vosco, mm-hmm. and. Bosco betrayed the society and went on the run. And this is like, I very much want to have a, a private word with him. Private. Well, word. no. Uh, in, in the, no. In the, I was going to say in the drama. In the book, Pesca I was going to say doesn't I don't know Fosco. Right. But he does know that someone yeah. betrayed the society. Yeah. And, and who do we think that could be? <laughs> <laughs> but in the drama, he's like, I very much want to have a word with him. And yeah. he kills him. Well, but in the book, from what I can remember from the radio play, he's found in a river. In Paris. In Yeah, and his throat had been slashed or something, isn't and it? And a T has been marked in his belly for the, the word traitor. Tratadore, yeah. meaning traitor. Yeah. Um, because... Uh, yeah, so look, Walter and Laura marry, and then he gets a commission to mm-hmm. go to Paris yeah. to find some art for somebody, and he takes Pesca with right. him, and he's in Paris, and he learns that the body of a very fat man mm. has been found, and he goes to see the body, and it's it's Fosco, right? Because I think Pesca. Um, told his brotherhood yeah. about Fosco yeah. and they found him and they murdered him. Yeah. And the man so, yeah, is... It, it's kind of, so like, uh, as I so said in the radio play as well, it's kind of, he didn't necessarily wield the sword as they do in the TV drama, but he he let the word out. He yeah, kind of... He got the word he out. Got, he started the step yeah. of his demise. Yeah. Yeah. And he's so good because, like, they both end up, these two men mm. who were so arrogant that they knew better that they can manipulate everybody they both get exactly what they deserve and it's fantastic and then and both of them have their kind of downfall thanks to women yeah and the women in this book in this story and i'm not just talking about anne laura and marion the women are so vivid like mm-hmm. anne catrick's mother mm-hmm. it's like who is a Grade A bitch. She is. Grade A bitch. But you don't forget her. (laughs) Well, the first line of the novel is this is the story of what a woman can endure and what a man can accomplish. Yeah. And it's the truth. Yeah. And I. It's such a pro feminist Mm -hmm. piece. It was astonishing to me, to be Mm. honest with you, that. I mean, and I started it. on my son's birthday, and I just was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And it hooked me from the beginning. And I, I've I've had trouble since reading it settling to any other book. Yeah. I've had real difficulty. Yeah. But I'm reading to make it in by Daphne du Maurier at the moment, and that's pretty good so yeah. far. But um, no, Wilkie Collins was a genius, mm-hmm. and he knew that this was his best book yeah. because on his gravestone in his will he, he particularly stated he particularly wanted you will put my gravestone. here lies wilkie collins his dates and then author of the woman in white and other works yeah because he thought that this was his best work yeah. and it's amazing yeah. i love it i can't wait for you to read it yeah well i'm think. gonna be i'm gonna be reading it in stratford yeah um so you know we'll see how we go now with the whole the just desserts thing uh, the 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 musical i quite like the musical the the stuff with this with the the stuff that they've changed i'm being like oh, i don't want the threesome sort of thing of love triangle of walter laura marion i don't want to hear that she sleepwalked out of her bedroom window because that's the thing that's possible logical to do mm. um i don't like that percival Glide got squashed by a train no. Um, there is there's like this sequence where um it's the bit where the whole death of Laura happens, but we kind of witness her being put in the asylum yeah. as she meets with Anne and that's they kind of pounce on her then and Anne's saying, You've betrayed me, how dare you, I curse you, 
for the for what you've done to me, Laura, and that's the last time that they, she sees her. That's bollocks. I know. It's just a bit like you're adding drama and stuff to somewhere where it doesn't need to be. Yeah. And Fosco, he, because, um, oh, oh, damn. Uh, Michael Crawford, that was it. Sorry, I couldn't think his name fell out of my head. He played Fosco uh, in the original thing, but what it was was... <laughs> He uh, they put him in a fat suit basically because he said I'll do that. That's the mm. only way you're going to do it. But he didn't anticipate that that fat suit gets very hot. I mean, eight times a week he'd have to do it, and he ended up collapsing. He wasn't able to to handle it, and Michael Ball took over. Um, so because they needed some, it was an emergency. Right, okay. Look, it was it was it literally Michael collapsed. It's like my Mike, uh, Michael Crawford collapsed. It was like Michael Ball. Can you do this? You start mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And he had to learn the entire, all the songs, everything in a day. And he did yeah. it. And he did it for three months. Right. So it was an emergency fix thing. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, Michael Ball did really well. Mm-hmm. But the thing with Michael Crawford is that he made Fosco comical. Oh, no. There's a song. I'll play it for you after this mm-hmm. in the musical. Um, is you can get away with anything. Mm-hmm. And there's on the actual cast recordings, you have the, the cast. And I think it was done kind of live because some of them you get applause and some of them you don't after. But there is a track where it's specifically the opening night. And he's letting his letting his birds and his mice go and he's playing with them and stuff. And the audience are hysterically laughing. And this is the point where he is saying, I can do whatever the hell I want. I'm this arrogant man. And he's making them piss themselves off mm. you know it's it, it's that's not who fosco is and he actually percival becomes the dominant thing of who in their relationship as to who has the plan and he tells him you're out of your mind what you're doing you have mm. to stop this and glide's like no i'm doing what they want i want you want in on this deal don't you like this and that's why fosco just leaves there's no comeuppance for Fosco in the end of the musical. Oh, that's silly. So that's why his his last song yeah. is "You Can Get uh, You Can Get Away with Anything." That's his last song, mm. and yeah, that's, that's it. No, it's I like, don't like that. It's weird. Um, yeah. But the radio play with Toby Stevens playing is Walter very faithful to the it's novel. Very, it's yeah. from what we've what we've discussed yeah. in this. It sounds very faithful it to us. But radio plays tend to do that, don't they? Well, yeah, because they're more they faithful have... to drama than to drama <sighs> than TV. Now. But you I wonder know, if it's what... that expectation of because TV and what the audience expects yeah. from it is very different when it comes to radio. I really, really like um, this. Yeah, it's so my only problem done. is him. Who? Oh, okay. Why? That's that's. that's I love Art Malik. That's as Art an actor. Malik. That's Art Malik. Yeah, he's a good actor. He, he in this they created his character. Right. Okay. Because when you referred to the lawyer, I was thinking that's not his name in the drama. Okay, no. in that drama. So I was just a bit like, who is this? They man? created so... his character as the backdrop of how the story is written, and they gave him a son that he'd fallen out with. And no, then no, he's... no. It was, it was, it was the daughter. The daughter. Because of her, okay. her marriage choice uh, and stuff. Who and she had just. Had and then a son. he's inspired to go and see her, and I just thought, yeah. well, that's, you don't need any of that. You yeah. don't need any of but that. It was very interesting how they constructed this because it began. You saw Laura's body being put into a coffin, and you sort of get these snippets of people giving evidence, and you see flashes of future events. But because of the way they've edited it. You think it's something totally different, and then when you realise in reality, you're like, "Oh my god!" The editing it's, in that the is editing useful. is fantastic yeah. in this. I mean, I um, love but, it, but, but, but... Uh, but that's but that is so great. I think that kind of puts a, an expression of what this story is about. Yeah. That things are not what they seem. No, no, you cannot believe what what you're being presented flat. Forward. No, but um, it's, yeah. it's so good, guys. I can't even tell yeah. you. I loved that book so much. I'm like still in the headspace of that book. Yeah. I love it. Love yeah. it. I can't and I strongly recommend, recommend it fully. 
the yes. drama. We both recommend yeah. the drama. I do, I do. I you prefer the book now that I you've read it. Book, yeah. So yeah, but I'm going to be reading the book next week um, when I'm in Stratford. And yes, I I love this. And this caused a tiny, well, a bit of controversy by fans of the book because they were very annoyed with the costume designer because it's not period. And it's like, why does Marion, she likes to wear waistcoats and long, long um, house jacket things. So, well, that's not what a woman would wear at that time. How dare you? It's not period. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's an expression of her character. The internet is so nice. It's like, yeah. And like, yeah. What, like, that design that, that um, oh, sorry, that she's wearing there with the sort of sleeves, yet she's got long sleeves. What is with that? That's not period. There were so many people that said, this has completely destroyed my love for the book because of the costumes. What? Like, no, I'm sorry. The internet you, is rubbish. Like you can, that, like, War and Peace, that was a stunning drama, mm-hmm. but there was stuff, there were outfits that were not of period, there weren't a play, but I didn't, I didn't care, because no. it's not about that, no. you know, but yeah, it's a shame that that caused a bit of a mini controversy, but the overall, the way that it's constructed, the way it's edited, the way it's acted, the, everything, I really loved this, um, so yeah, I strongly recommend that. Absolutely. I recommend the radio play with Toby Stevens playing Walter. Mm-hmm. I like the musical for the music, but I for the story the stuff that they changed, I wouldn't go for it. No. Um so and of course recommend the book as well. So ten out of ten Wilkie. I love <laughs> Wilkie Collins. Mm. He suddenly become like a feminist hero for me because I'm like the man can do no wrong. Yeah. And I really want to read his other books, but later yeah. on. Yeah later on but yeah yeah that's it i think we're done yeah so yeah thanks for watching guys and if you want to leave your comments on what you thought of the book the drama the radio play musical whatever um then please do and we'll see you guys later bye, bye.